checking the homework at all? Nope, because I'm just going to take the quiz grade that we're going to do here in a minute. Okay. That'll be the grade for the day. Did you think our homework grade last class? I don't think so. Did. No. I don't think so. No, this was the this was whole grade. So no. We just added all the grade. Questions, problems you want to see worked off of page 311 or 312? Better ask now. 37. 37. One's off these two pages. I'm sorry, say again. 36 to 39. You got your calculators out. If you don't have a calculator, you might want to grab, unless you want to do it longhand, you might want to grab one of the tablets real quick. Uh, 36. Uh, exercise 35, 238. You're given a sample mean, sample standard deviation, use the information to construct a 90% and a 95% confidence interval. Interpret the results. Uh, if convenient, use technology. You want me to do it longhand or you want me to do it using the calculator? Calculator. calculator. Again, you're not going to have much time to do this quiz, so if you don't have a calculator, I highly suggest you grab a tablet here real quick because when we start to do this quiz and I say you got three minutes to do it, that's all you're going to get. If you're messing around with the tablet and it's not working for those three minutes. What's on the quiz? Just stuff over this. Which one are we doing? 36 or 35? 37. Which one did you guys say? 36. Okay, so 36. Uh, Chelsea. I'm controlling my R. From a random sample of 48 days, so. What you need to do, and you're going to have to do this on the stuff that we do today also, write down this stuff. If it's a random sample of 48 days, I think that's what it said, right? Yep. So N equals 48. In a recent year, the gas price has had a mean of 234. So that's our X bar. That's our uh, point of estimate. 234 was the mean gas price. And the standard deviation, that's our S. How come it's S and not sigma this time? Sample, right? We don't know the population. We're using this sample. We want to do a 90% confidence interval and a 95% confidence interval. What information do we need to plug it into the calculator? What we have? Is that what it is? Well, for 90, like, wouldn't you subtract um, 1? If we're just plugging in a calculator, do we need to do that? No. It does it all for us, right? Yeah. But what information does it ask you for on the calculator? Uh, stats or data. Be stats. Stats or data? No, this time it, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, stats. Sorry. Is 
Is there anything else that we need other than these three numbers? That's it? So what do we hit on our calculator? Uh, stat, math, or theater rule. Stat, then you got test, Z interval. And then plug it in. Then it's stat first. We want stats, right? When do you want data? I think there was one problem on the homework where you needed data. It's popular. No. If it gives you a list. Oh, okay. So if you have to put in a list, you put it in a list and then you can use data. It'll, it'll pull it exactly from the list instead of you have to do all that. I think there was only one of them. What was it? 49 or something? So we put in stats. What's our sigma this time? Uh, we use S instead of sigma. What's our X bar? 2.34. What's our N? 48. 48. Now the first thing, and I forget to do this all the time, the first thing that we should check is that that N is what? Higher, higher than 30. I forget to do that because I just look at it when I write it down and say, oh, it's higher than 30, so let's go on. So I don't think about it. We're going to do something today. So it's going to be higher than 30 right? Yep. What, what do we put in for our C level? We'll put in 90.90. <coughs> Calculate, what's it tell you? Um, 2.264, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.64, 2.
We expand it out a little more. We want to be 100% confident. We take everything that we possibly can. And we know, hey, it's going to fall in there. Is that ever going to help you? I think one of the questions on the homework too was said was, is a 99% confidence interval always a good thing? No, you'd like to be that confident, but all that does is expand your gap there and now you're saying, yeah, the, the ages of students at National Trail are going to be between 0 and 150. Well, no kidding. All right, so it doesn't really help anything. If we want to be a little, you know, if we want something that actually means something, then we're going to say, okay, we're 90% confident that the ages are between 12 and 20. Ninety, then you're, you're becoming less and less confident, but you're getting more and more precise. So now we're saying, okay, all the ages that National Trail students are between 16 and 18, but maybe we only have like a 60% confidence that that's going to be true. So that means when we go, when we actually find the mean of the population, there's if there's a 60% chance that it falls in there, then that means there's a what? 40% chance that it doesn't fall in there. So now we're, eh, you know, it's a it's a better bet than not, but I don't know that I would put all the money I have on that. If that makes sense. You want me to do 37 still? Yep. 37, so I don't have to keep looking at my book. Somebody help me out. They tell us in? Uh, 31. 31. Right away I noticed that that's what? Higher than 30. Higher than 30. Do they tell us X bar? 99.3. Say it again? 99.3. Do they tell us S? 41.5. 41.5, wow. How come I said wow? That's a big standard deviation. We're, we're at a number 99, that's not a real huge number or anything. And we're saying, okay, we can go out 41 this way, 41 this way, another 41, another 41. That's more than a third of it. Right, that's, that's almost half of where you're at on the mean. And we want 90% and 95% again, is that right? Yep. What do we punch into the calculator this time? If we weren't going to use the calculator, what would we have to find? The z-score, the, Z -score, the critical value, right? The critical value, we'd have to find that. And for 90%, 95%, again, use this chart. For 90%, 1.645, if I could write up here. For 95%, 1.96. They're right there on that little chart, usually 80, 90, 95, 99. Those are the ones that we use most of the time. Uh, somebody punch this into your calculator. I'm not even going to punch it in this time. Tell me what we get. Say it again. 87.04. 87.04. Now the reason I think they gave us a problem like this on here is because of that last problem. How much difference was there between 90% and 95% on the last problem? Nah, Hardly much. none. But watch what happens here. What happened? It got quite a bit wider, didn't it? Not, I mean, not a whole lot for the numbers, but it, you can tell it got wider this time. So, for your explanation here, 95% interval is wider.
don't forget too, because I know in past years when I've taught this, we forget what we're actually doing with this. All right? Because the calculator gives it to us this way just because that was easy for them to program that in. What we're actually looking at is a number line. On our number line, what goes right there in the middle? Which is 99.3. And then we have this out here, what is that? 87.04. On 11.56. Might want to watch closely on this. This distance from here to there, what's the letter that that stands for? I'll tell you it's a capital letter. A. B. This might be a rough. Oh, it is. That's the margin of error, right? That's the margin of error right there. What's the letter it stands for this distance from here to there? Same thing. <laughs> I thought I could trick you. What? I did trick Malachi. I didn't know That's not much fun to trick Malachi. It's like tricking a puppy dog or something. <laughs> so those are E. How can we find E here, the margin of error? Minus. You could just subtract two of these, whichever two you want. What else could you do? Add and subtract, or add and divide. That's to find this. Close up. Instead of adding and dividing by two, what do you do? Subtract them and divide by two. Either way. But that's got to be able to find the E. They told us this. They told us the mean this time. Could you find the mean if you were just given those other two? So you, you do what? 111 minus 87. 111 plus, plus and then divide by 38. You still want me to do 38? Yeah. Same kind of setup, right? Yeah. Somebody tell me in. 36. 23. That's X bar? Mm -hmm. 6.7. You still want 90% and 95%? Mm -hmm. Is that right? I'm going to do this this time. Draw the number line instead of putting it in brackets. Do it on your calculator. Somebody tell me what number goes right here. 21.1. So 21.2, let's say. What goes here? 24.8. Anybody else agree with that? Yeah. So we're saying we're 90% confident that for the entire population, the mean of the entire population would fall in that interval. Let's do the same thing on this one. 20.8. 20 20.8. 20 and again, what happened? It got wider. 95% is wider than the 90%. Yeah, it's not very far off, is it? Like point, about a half on one side and a half on the other side. Can we do that one with the list? Want to do that? <laughs> Hold on, they want 39. Then you guys want 39 also? Yes, no, maybe. It's the same thing. Uh, 35 through 38 was the same. 39, I don't know. I will try to do it. Want to do 39? Yeah. 39. I thought that's one somebody asked for first. You work at a consumer advocate agency and you want to estimate the population mean cost of replacing a car's transmission. Uh, as part of your study, you randomly select 50 replacement costs 
and find the mean to be 2650. Sample standard deviations 425. Construct a 95% confidence interval. Is something like this maybe important? Yeah. Yeah, do you, you take your car to some transmission shop and they tell you, yeah, it's going to cost us $3,800 to, to fix it. And you don't know any better because you're not a transmission person. Might something like this be nice to know? Hey, I'm probably getting ripped off by this guy or this girl. I, don't, I shouldn't, sorry, I didn't mean to be sexist and say guys can only be jerks. What's our N this time? What's our X bar? 26.50. What's our S? 4.25. We want a 95% confidence interval. Is that what it said? So is that enough to punch it into our calculator? Somebody tell me the... 2,532.2. Now use your brain a little bit here with my, uh, that other senior class that I teach. Do I want to put point two there? What do I want to add on to the end here? They get mad at me because I take off points because most of the stuff that we deal with in there is money. If you don't put a zero on the end of that and it's money, it just doesn't make sense. Use your brain a little bit, right? What goes here? 2767.8. So we go somewhere, we go to a transmission shop, our transmission's bad, and the guy tells us it's going to cost us $2,600. Is that feasible? Yeah, it sort of makes sense that it probably would fall within that range, right? It's sort of around the average. Which one did you guys say? Uh, do the list. Is that 49? 49. All right, on 49, first thing you got to do, I'll give you a minute to do this. Go into stat. Doesn't matter which list. I, just, I think I put mine in list one when I was doing it. Doesn't make any difference. And put in all that data. So take a minute, do that real quick. That. <coughs> nice every now and then. Not very often. But. what to do if, as far as the EOC goes. Do you remember? Were you paying any attention? Anybody got it punched in yet? Yeah. yeah. So you got it punched in. You could hit one bars and find the standard deviation, the mean, all that stuff, right? Like we did before. We really don't need to. If you go back to stat and go over to test again, go down to Z interval. This time, instead of putting in the stats, now we're going to let the calculator use the data. So we go over to data, highlight it, hit enter. Uh, and they actually told us, Camden's got my book so I can't tell you. They actually told us that S was what? 1.3. So S is 1.3. You're going to need that to punch in there. Put in 1.3 one, 1 for the sigma. Uh, what was the percent? 
sea le the sea was what? 90 and 99. 90 and 99? Yeah. So 90% and then we're going to also do 99%. Oops. 99%. The frequency, just leave it as a one. I think it, does yours say frequency on it? Yeah. Just leave it as one. Always? Yeah, I, well, for now, for these. Do we not need the, the no? If you're on data, it takes that away. What's the interval for 90%? 14.62 to 58. Anybody else get that? Yes, I got that. Then what are we going to go back in and do? Just plug in the 99. Now you're just going to change the 90 to a 99. What should happen when you go to 99? It's wider. Should get wider. Now, when you go from 90 to 99, they usually will get quite a bit wider. Because if we're at 99, we want to be really confident that we're in that interval. So we expand it out a little bit farther. Ms. Clark, you're looking at that like that's not right or something. No, just trying to say What goes here? as much wider as I thought it would. It did. Yeah, it got wider. Got about one whole number wider. Yeah. Got a whole number about half. Everybody figuring it out on your calculator? Can we do like a 53, 54, 56? Okay, did you figure it out? Punch it in there. I gotta be on data. See how it gets rid of the X bar and stuff? Now go ahead and go down and hit calculate. And it shows you what X bar was and what standard deviation was and what N was. So it shows you all that stuff that we needed before. When all we, right. Because it, it put it in the list, and then instead of you like counting one, two, three, four, five, and see that there's 20 of them and all that, you put it in the list, and it does all that for you. Which one did you guys say? Uh, let's, yeah, 53 hours. 53? Yeah. Read it to me. 53 <laughs> Quick, because we got to move. All right, stop right there. So E, that's our margin of error, has to be 0.5, okay? Keep going. Okay, determine the minimum requirement sample size to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Assume the population standard deviation is 2.8 milligrams. So that's sigma 2.8. Now that's something when you get out and you own your own business, you have to do stuff like this. The government will come in and shut you down. If you got too much sodium in something, you see what they did the McDonald's here a couple years ago, right? Where they 
you, know, you guys didn't pay attention to all that? Where they made them start their hamburgers and stuff. They had to start using better meat and stuff to get the trans fat and the sodium and the gluten and said, all right, you got too much in it. Either do something about it or you're going to be out of business. So I think that's dumb. I think businesses should be able to do what they want. If people choose to come and buy stuff from them, so be it. That's probably true. But. Well, the ignorance of the people. Right. Yeah, but if they, if they want to eat healthy food, yeah. So, but then you get on a slippery slope when you say that. And I, I was watching a show last night where these doctors are given vaccinations for the flu and the vaccination wasn't any good. It was just a placebo. Remember when we talked about placebos? False test. So it was just a placebo where they were just shooting uh, whatever, something. yeah, something into their vein, what? and it wasn't working, and then people were catching the flu and dying. Yeah. So then you start saying, well, that's the person, you know, you're saying that, and you're saying, well, that's the person's fault for going to that doctor. Well, we trust our doctors. You don't trust fast food people. You hear about people saying, like, oh, you can spit in my food, stuff like that. Like, you hear about that all the time. Like, who just say that? I work at McDonald's, and I know. I worked there for like I three many months. A, many a hamburgers. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why do that? I worked there for like three <laughs> months. I, I didn't spit in nobody's that. hamburger. I'm lying. Yes, you did. They, they wouldn't even let me work on the grill. They made me work out front. You worked out front with people? You tried to spit. You worked with people. Let me use the people first. Let's go. Honest. So we have this. We're trying to find ends. Anybody have the formula for N? <laughs> D C Sigma. Sigma? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sigma? Yeah. Okay. Divided by E from C to square. Yeah, that's whatever. Alright. You got it on your notes there somewhere, don't you? ZC, we got to find, this time we have to find the critical value, all right? Well, we're at a 95% confidence interval, so the easiest way to find the critical value, we could use the calculator and do the inverse norm, all that stuff. It's easier to just look right here. If it's 95%, what's the critical value? I hope you got those charts. What's sigma this time? 2.8. Punch all that into your calculator. When I punch it into my calculator, and if you do it some different way and you get the same answer, that's great. But I always want to make sure that I'm telling my calculator right. So I punch in 1.96 times 2.8. Hit enter. Then I hit divided by whatever that bottom number is. Hit enter again, then I hit square. How did you get my point It's off the chart. It's 95 percent, and if we're 95 percent, it tells us right down here. We could have do. You know, last time we did this, I didn't want to go through all this, but last time we did this, 95 percent. That means there's 2.5 over here and 2.5 over here. So you could use that area inverse norm punch into your calculator. It's easier just to look right here because that little chart right there tells you the ones that we use most of the time. Anybody get this? 120 point what? 47. We said because we're looking for n, n is the number that we need in our sample so what are we going to do to that number? How many people do we need to sample? Or how many samples do we need to take? 121. We're always going to round it up. So we need to take, I guess it was cheese this time, wasn't it? So we need to take about 121 samples of the cheese to get a good estimate. There's a B answer. Oh, is there? Yeah. What did B say? Repeat for A using 99 confidence. 
So if we use a 99% confidence interval, everything here is going to stay the same except the 1.96. Two point five seven five. Again, that's from the chart. I might do that for us. Two hundred seven point nine three. What are we going to do with that then? Round it up to two hundred eight. So we need about two hundred eight samples to be what it was at 99% confident? And C just said, compare the two, right? When you start to try to be more confident, 99% confident, what happened to the number you need in the sample? It needs to get bigger. So the bigger your sample size, the more confident you can be about it. Nope, that's it. Get out a clean sheet of paper, that's your quiz. Got about three minutes to do it. Two problems. You know, I was joking when I said that earlier. Uh, oh, I found it. Better hurry. Good now, I don't waste time being so happy that you found it. Get two problems done. So we my buddy. Should have two answers for each one. Two answers in the fact the first one asks you for two things and then the second one asks you for an interval. So you should have a high or a low number and a high number. Bring it up to me.
So everybody's right? First, give me interval. Also, we're to that point of the year. I think I said this last time. Sorry, but where it was a softer, gentler Eversol before now, which I know you probably didn't realize. Now I'm just going to be a, 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 a richer kid. All right. Your head explained. Everybody get one of these? No. Wait, don't worry, you have one? No. Uh, so, number one, we just went over a bunch of stuff. If you were paying attention, should you have done alright on this quiz? Yeah. yeah. Not paying attention? I, I, I got no sympathy for you anymore. On the first one, we want to find the mean. How do we find the mean using these two numbers? Add them up. Divide Add them up, divide by two. What you come up with? Somebody add them real quick. A3. Then we also want to find the margin of error. From what I graded so far, a lot of people didn't know how to find the margin of error. Remember, on the number line, this is what I kept going back to. On the number line, our mean's right in the middle. It helps you draw it. We got one out here. We got one out here. That's 4.25. That's 9.41. Where's the margin of error? Between 2.58. The other way you could have found it, instead of adding these two and dividing by two, you could have subtracted, subtracted them and divided by two. Or you could have took this and subtract one of those and found it. Lots of different ways. This one, you plug it into your calculator. Again, on your calculator, you punch in, uh, you hit stat, right, stat, uh, go over to test, down to Z interval. You punch all those things in. What did it come out to be? 11.951. And? 12.649. Close enough. 
How would you find the mean on this one? for mean with small samples. So now we're going to construct confidence intervals where n is less than 30. What do you think happens when you start creating confidence inter intervals where your sample size is less than 30? It's kind of more difficult. Eh, not really more difficult. It's just kind of smaller. Accurate. It's inaccurate. It's not, it's not near as accurate. All right, so but there's a lot of times when we can't do anything else, all right? If, if for whatever reason we can't get more than 30 samples, then we have to do this. Uh, some examples of that, if you have a factory and you're building these products and you only create, let's say, 25 of your product each day, do you really want to take 30 samples out of your production and test those 30? Probably not. Then you're wasting like a day and a half of work time. So sometimes you have to use something like this. What it's called, it's called a T distribution. What did we just get done doing? Z, Z. A Z distribution or normal Z distribution is what we did. That was the normal T distribution. T distribution is when we're using small samples. Now we're going to use this when population standard deviation is unknown, the sample size is less than 30, uh, your random variable x is approximately normal. So we're going to have to be able to say, okay, it's, it's usually normal to this. Now what a t-distribution does, it uses something that we talked about earlier in the year. When we have these, it's going to start off, might look something like that. We talked about this earlier in the year, remember when we did these and the, the tails were up off of the bar a little bit. And with the t-distribution, there's several of them. So the different sample sizes you get, each curve is going to look a little different until you keep getting closer and closer to that 30 where then we would be normal. So it's going to keep getting tighter and tighter in there. Going through all this again, what's X bar stand for? Mean minus the mean of the population. Remember this is our uh, not margin of error, uh, what was it called? We didn't use it that last section very often. X bar minus mu was the sampling error. I think for a second. That was the sampling error. S over the square root of n. We used that already to find T. Yeah, I would probably, let's see, in the calculator, how would I do this? I would probably subtract those two, hit enter, and then I would put in a parenthesis, and I would put in whatever S is, divided by the square root of N, close the parenthesis, and then hit enter again. Yeah, stuff like this, it sort of gets real confusing when you have a fraction on bottom of a fraction. Does anybody know what, mathematically, what could we do with that? If I put parentheses around this, 
That could be x bar minus mu. Think back to your algebra 2 and pre-calc days, wherever you might have been. Instead of dividing by this fraction, what would we, what could we do? Multiply by the reciprocal. So we could multiply by that. So you could change it to do this, multiply by the square root of n, then divide by s, and it should come out to be the same answer. Does that confuse you, Sydney? Just, just forget it and do it the way we said originally. Critical value uh, t is denoted tc. So your critical value this time is tc. Instead of zc, it's tc. That's your critical value. We're looking for those critical values. Again, all we're doing, we're on this curve. We're looking for those critical values. That's a critical value. That's a critical value. But now we're using a t distribution or t scores instead of z scores. Properties of a t distribution. It's symmetric, it's bell shaped. You don't have to write all this down. Some of it you might want to write down here in a second and I'll tell you when. The T distribution is a family of curves. All those curves I just drew there, it's like a bunch of families. So it, or it, not a bunch of families, it's a bunch of members of a family. So you have one curve that fits this, then another curve that's uh, four instead of five, and then another curve that's six instead of four or five, so on and so on. So you have a whole bunch of curves and they end up looking like like that. They sort of overlap each other and they get closer in the middle. We talked about degrees of freedom earlier this year. Anybody remember what degrees of freedom were? Got all of you in here. If I only had 15 chairs in the room, one person walks in. How many chairs they got to choose from? 15. The second person walks in. How many chairs they got to choose from? 14. All right. We get to the 15th person. How many chairs they got to choose from? One. Degrees of freedom, that's what degrees of freedom uh, are. We talked about it earlier this year. It's not hard to find. The thing you might want to write down, degrees of freedom is just n minus 1. Does anybody remember that now where you had to just take n minus 1? You took 50 minus 1 or 10 minus 1. Degrees of freedom. You just take the number in your sample minus 1. Don't make degrees of freedom harder than it is. That is something easy. That's probably why you don't remember from earlier because it was just easy. Number three, the total area under the T curve is always one. That's the same, same under the T curve as it is the normal curve. The mean, median, and mode, always zero. Same thing as the Z scores. Mean, median, and mode is always the same thing. As the degrees of freedom increase, the T distribution approaches normal distribution. So as your degrees of freedom get higher, get closer and closer to 30, the more we get closer and closer to the normal that we've been doing. All right? So if we get to, if we're at 29 and we do 29 minus 1, which is 28, we're pretty close to 30, so we're going to be about normal. If we go, if our n is 31, and we do 31 minus 1, we get 30, do we really need to use this t distribution anymore? No, because how many did we have in the sample? 31. That's bigger than 30, so we could have just used what we were using in the first section of this chapter. And that's a decision you're going to have to make, and that's going to make this, when we do take a test over this or the rest of this chapter, it's going to make it hard because now you've got to decide, am I using the T distribution or am I using the normal distribution, the Z stuff? So if our DF is 2, might look something like that. Notice you've got big fat tails down here because we're not really being real accurate. We go 5, tails get a little smaller, gets a little taller up, a little closer together, a little more compact. So on, so on, as we move them on up. 
finding critical values. So we're going to do this one real quick. This is where you're going to use your chart. Uh, critical value TC for 95% confident when your sample size is 15. Well, if our sample size is 15, what's our degrees of freedom? 15 minus 1, which is 14. All you're going to do, you're going to use that. You're going to use that to find your critical value, your TC. So you're going to use that chart. I don't have my chart here. What happened to them? Back to the rest of the charts. I'll do something with them. On your chart, look down at your degrees of freedom. It's right down the side here. We go down to what this time? 14. All we're looking at is this top part right here. The one tail and the two tail, that's going to come later. All right? That's not right now, so don't worry about the one tail and the two tail. We go over to 95, down to 14. So your TC is 2.5. 145. That's your critical value. So if I'm looking on a graph, what's this number right here? Close. What's this number right here? Let's start there then. 2.145. What's this one? Negative 2.145. What percent of the stuff's right in here? 95%. So sort of same thing, just kind of, you have to use the chart there, use the chart here, hopefully, hopefully we got the right answer. We go down to 14, over to 95, 2.145 is our critical value. That's all the stuff we just said. All right, confidence interval. You're going to make the confidence interval the same way that you made the other one. You might want to write this down. To get your confidence interval, X bar minus E, what's E stand for again? What well, you guys had so much trouble with on the quiz? Margin of error. So you're going to subtract the margin of error to get this in, add the margin of error to get that in. That's going to tell us our mu should fall in between these two things. The way we find E, this is the formula to find E. Does that formula look familiar? Yeah, it's the exact same formula as the other one, except this before wasn't TC. What was it? CC. Same thing. You might want to write down there. First thing you got to do, you have to find that critical value. That's got to be first. You got to find that critical value. The S is probably going to be given to you. The N is probably going to be given to you. mean would fall in that interval, not the probability. I'll have to check on that. Uh, this is, a, this is one, not one I made up. To do this, and again, this is just like the last time, it's not really all that difficult. Some of this stuff you might want to just jot down real quick, the steps. Number one, identify the sample. So the first thing you're going to do, find n, x bar, and s. Where do we normally find those at? They normally tell us, right? Unless they give us a list, and then you have to add them all up and divide to find x bar, and you can find uh, s and, uh, by plugging into the calculator. You can find n by counting how many of them there are. Unless you run out of fingers and toes and then you might have to get your brother or sister to help you write Molly. Have them hold up their fingers and toes so that you can continue on.
Then you're going to find your degrees of freedom and your critical value. So you find, find N, X bar and S, find DF, find TC on your C, find your margin of error, find your E. How come we didn't write all this down last time? What did it for you? Calculator. The calculator did most of it for you. Yeah, but I think you do have to do some of it yourself. So here I would just, again, find, first thing you're going to do, find those three. Next thing, find degrees of freedom, your C, and your critical value. Next thing, find margin of error. That margin of error formula, hopefully you can remember this formula, right? That's not a real hard one. That one there is the one that you might want to make sure you have written down. We're probably not ever going to use this formula because before we'd ever use that, that's the big long charts that we did back at the start of the year. Before we'd ever use that, we'd probably just plug the list into the calculator and let the calculator find the standard deviation. Next, you're going to find the left and the right, and all you're going to do to find the left and the right, subtract the margin of error from the mean, add the margin of error to the mean. So find those two. Oops. That's it. I thought there was one more step. I guess you, then you just put it in your interval. Now again, were we writing the interval this way? Yeah, we were probably writing it set of parentheses or on a number line. Nothing different. Same stuff that we did last section, right? Except now your Z scores are T's because we're using smaller things. Again, how are you going to know when to use the Z or the normal? What's one key thing that tells you that you're using Z or normal? N's greater than or equal to 30. When do you use the T stuff? When N is less than 30. That's the one, one key concept. Now there's other things that might allow you to use the Z instead of the T. So, and we're going to go over that here in a second. Uh, do we even need to go over this problem? You guys think you can handle it? I don't feel like that. Here's what you do, you find N. I love these computers. Anybody guess what that's supposed to say? That's the X bar, but my bar, for some reason, fell off the X over there in that area. Find D of F, that's N minus 1, 16 minus 1, so on and so on. They give you all that information. Go to the table, you can find the critical values right there. Then we can find E. I'm going through this real quick because just like in the past, I lied to you. Guess what you can do all this on? Calculator. Calculator. We find the left end. We find the right end, and then we know our mu should fall within that interval somewhere. So it should look something like that right there. There's how you do it on the calculator. You know this is going to confuse Brendan back here, right? You're going to have to remember that there's two different what? There's a Z interval and there's a T, T interval.
Again, if you're doing data, if you have a list, then you put it in a list and use data instead of stats. Use stats if you're just <laughs> plugging in the standard deviation, the X bar, and all that stuff. Again, right here's the four things you're going to have to plug in. I got that much? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. You know that's Jake, right? Yeah. time this week? It's what? the first time since mom's been gone? It's been late? Yeah. Your grandma watching you? No, grandma was just watching you. Yeah, he didn't want to say it. Grandma was babysitting. Your grandma said, you. All right, so this is to tell whether we're using a Z score or a T score or a T distribution. So this is your Z. That's your, uh, or T. Is, first thing you're going to ask yourself, is N greater than or equal to 30? If it's yes, then what do we use? Then use the Z. Alright, so if yes, use Z. If it's no, anybody know what this whole thing that I'm drawing up here is called? Flow chart. So it's just showing you how to go. If it's no, then you ask yourself, is the population norm, uh, normal or approximately normal? If no, then you can't use the normal distribution or the T distribution. You can't use either one. All right? So we do nothing. we got to start all over. We screwed up somewhere, and it just doesn't work. All right? So it won't work. If it doesn't, if it's not normal, and it was less than 30, we're out of luck. Either we go back and get a bigger sample so we can use the Z's, or we just stop and say, oh, what the heck with it. Uh, if our sigma is known, so if the standard deviation of the population is known, then we can use the Z stuff. If it's not known, but it was normal, then we use the T stuff. All right, so the two key main things here, N, if N is greater than or equal to 30, everything's fine, we can use Z, do it that way that we did in that first section. If it's not greater than 30, but it's normal, then we can use T. All right. If sigma is known and it's and we're less than 30, but it's normal and sigma is known, we could still use the easier Z stuff. So when we go to take a test over this, you're going to have to make that decision. Which one am I using? Am I using the Z? Am I using the T? You randomly select 25 right away. We select 25. What do we know? We're probably using T because we're less than 30. Uh, sample means that, assuming construction is normally distributed, so it's normal. Uh, should you use normal distribution uh, or the T distribution? What they tell us here. Standard deviation of the population is what? 
So can we use the Z stuff? Yeah. If you know that, even though you're less than 30, if you know the population standard deviation, then you can use the Z stuff. It has to be the population. It can't just be the, the sample. It has to be the population. So we can use the normal distribution stuff. Uh, in a random sample of seven computers, the mean repair cost is $100, and the standard deviation is 42. So on, so on, a confidence interval. Uh, mean repair cost assumed variables normal. Uh, so that we're doing this whole problem here. So we found all, or we know all this stuff. N is seven. So we're less than 30. If we're less than 30, we have to use what? Use the T stuff, right? Sigma is unknown, so we still got to use, that tells us we still have to use the T. It's normal, so that means we're all right to use the T. We go through all this, we need the margin of error. I figured it out longhand. If you grab your calculator, grab your calculator real quick so we can try this on the calculator. I'm figuring it out longhand. I figured out E was this and doing all this stuff. On your calculator, punch in for me. Let's make sure I'm doing this right. Punch in for me. Uh, let's see, on the calculator, what things do we need to know? We need N, X bar, Sigma, actually S this time, right? And C. Do we know any of those? N is 7. Standard deviation is 42. So C is 0.95. 100. Now, if you go down the T interval on your calculator, what things do you need? X bar. Do we need all those? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So punch them all in. 60.69. So what? 135.31. So you just punch it into the calculator again. We're probably not going to write it this way. We're probably going to write it the way the calculator says. Like that, right? No, I understand that. But if you did have to, have to do it out longhand, you find E. First, first you've got to find the, the critical value, which is on the chart, 2.447. Then you find E. You take your mean, which was 100. Subtract off 39.31. That gives us the low end. Take your mean, which was 100. Add on 39.31, which will give us the high end. It's not real hard to do out longhand. If you can let the calculator do the work for you, it's usually easier, right? Less mistakes, unless you punch in something wrong. That's the assignment. Page 323, 1 through 16, all 17 through 31 odd numbers. 1 through 16, all. Jacob, you might want to get the notes off somebody. Not really a whole lot.